So this one comes in two parts, but let's just take it one piece at a time, shall we? Part one, for t greater than or equal to zero, the velocity of a mass on a spring experiencing damped harmonic motion, pause for a second, in case you have forgotten, damped harmonic motion is such that, like, usually it just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Okay, uh, but this one is going to slow down, so then its graph sort of... It oscillates still, but then its oscillation gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, anyway, uh, is given by the function v of t is equal to e to the negative t times sine t. So this is the, like you got an exponential uh, decay function, and then you have yourself a sinusoidal um, kind of a harmonic motion function there. And then when you multiply this exponential function, times all the y values on the sine function, this is what you get, right? So you can kind of visualize a exponential decay being right about there. Anyway, um, so where v of t is measured in centimeters per second and t is measured in seconds, find the average acceleration over the interval from zero to pi. Indicate units of measure. Does this question sound familiar? Because it should, it's from one of your tests. It was an example of me pre-teaching the idea of the mean value theorem, as you're going to see in part two here. All right, so we want average acceleration. Average acceleration That is the change in equals change in velocity over the change in time. And we have a velocity equation. And we're looking for an average. This is not calculus. This is pre-calculus. This is just straight up slope. And it gives us an interval. And the interval with the t values here from 0 to pi. In other words, I want v of, you can do this in whatever order you want to. I guess we'll go with the pi first. So zero, v, blah, blah, v of pi minus v of 0 divided by, keep it in the same order, pi minus zero, right? Just plugging this stuff into our equation and getting our v values. v of pi is equal to e to the negative pi times the sine of pi. Sine of theta, brilliant, sine of pi. Let's throw a unit circle up over here. And uh, pi is over this way. Sine is the y-coordinate, which is a whole bunch of nothing. That's equal to zero. Nice. And let's do the same thing for zero. This would be e to the zero, which is uno times sine of zero. Uh, that's this point over here. What's the y coordinate of that point? It's still zero. Look if that's zero. Which means, back up here at our slope calculation, we've got zero minus zero over pi minus zero, just pi, which is equal to, I'm thinking, I might have to pull out a calculator for this, but yeah, we got zero. We've got zero watts. Okay, on the top, uh, what were we measuring? And we were in centimeters per second. So this part up here is on centimeters per second. And the bottom part is on seconds. So it's centimeters per second per second or centimeters per second squared. Centimeters per second squared. There you go. We just found an average rate of change, and, and you know what? In the context of this problem and the mean value theorem, well, we have ourselves a function which is both continuous and differentiable over this closed interval, right? So here's a sample of the graph going on right there, which means that we're guaranteed that someplace in this interval, whatever the average rate of change is, which we found to be zero, should be equal to the instantaneous rate of change someplace in between zero and pi. That's what question number two is about. Given the velocity function from question one, find the time or times at which the average acceleration over the interval from zero to pi equals the instantaneous acceleration within the interval. Once again, it is the mean value theorem and it fits the criteria. Criteria were three. No, they weren't. There were two of them. It's got to be continuous on the closed interval. Yeah, that fits it. And differentiable on the open interval from zero to pi. Yeah, that fits it too. Okay, and we found ourselves the average rate of change. Now we just need to find the instantaneous rate of change. To find the instantaneous rate of change, got to find the derivative. So v of t is equal to e to the negative t 
times the sine of t. Let's take the derivative. And when I do, I'm going to have to use the product rule, because can you see we've got a product? I know I didn't put the little time symbol in between there, but that's implied. So v prime of t is equal to the derivative of the first one would be negative e to the negative t times sine of t plus the first one times the derivative of the second one, which is cost, cosine of t. And then I have myself a common factor of e to the t, which I will go ahead and factor out. So I'll make that e to the negative t times, no, 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 negative sine t, and then plus cost, cosine t. And if you wanted to, you could put this e to the negative t down to the bottom, just saying if you wanted to. And uh, what, what did we need this thing to equal? We needed this thing to equal zero. Oh, you know what? You know what? I just realized not only is this the mean value theorem, it's, it's actually also rolls theorem, right? Because the y values there were the same and we have a slope of zero. So we're finding a place where the instantaneous rate of change, the derivative there is equal to zero. So we've got a product of two things equaling zero, which means at least one of them has to be zero. If you can hear that, I'm, I've got a call from spam risk. I'm, I don't know that guy, so I'm not gonna answer it. Um, so that means that either e to the negative t is equal to zero or the other one. It can't be this one because that's exponential. You've got yourself horizontal asymptote at zero, can't ever be zero. It's got to be this one, sine t, negative sine t plus cosine t is equal to zero. Maybe separate them, add that sine t over, cosine t is equal to sine t. Where is cosine t equal to sine t? Well, maybe that, maybe I'm looking at this and I have, I have no clue. Maybe what I do instead is I, I go, I'm going to divide this by cosine. I'm going to divide this one by cosine. And I would get 1 on the left-hand side, and I would have sine over cosine, which is tangent of t. So if I couldn't get it from back up here, where cosine and sine were exactly equal to each other, maybe I can get it from here. Where's tangent equal to 1? Well, it's equal to 1 in a whole bunch of places. It's equal to 1 right here at pi over 4, but it's also equal over here at, let's see, this is uh, 4 fourths. That would be 5 fourths. We don't want that one. Why don't we want this one? Because it's out of the interval, which is supposed to be from 0 to pi over 4. So it happens at t is equal to pi over 4 seconds. I think it was in seconds, wasn't it? Yes. Which is in our interval. As expected, as predicted by Roll, Michel Roll, way back when.